Okay, I'll start. Um, so this is the, the lightning talk session, or Niels calls it the, hey, look at this session. My name is Frank Neumann, Karlsruhe, Germany. Some might have seen me in earlier Linux Audio conferences. My little contribution for this year is what I call a little helper for Drum KV1. Drum KV1 is a small instrument by Rui Capella. Um, so, some introduction. Uh, it looks like this. It's a, either a standalone um, LV2, uh, sorry, an, L, an standalone jack instrument or an LV2 plugin. It's very simplistic. It allows you to load samples, assign them to MIDI keys, play them back. It has some additional features like it has um, a, a filter, an amplifier plus envelope, a small LFO, chorus, reverb, compressor, all of this built in. Um, you just load samples and play them back via MIDI or via your sequencer of choice. Um, it's a simple UI, it is quick to learn, and it is well integrated with Qt Factor. It is a very lightweight program in the sense that it is not something like hydrogen. It does not have velocity layers, it does not have mute groups, and it's uh, far less sophisticated. And what bothers me most, it's somewhat tedious to create mappings with it. So if you say have 30 samples and you want to align them, you would really go back to that UI, double click on that waveform display up on the right, choose your file, set five, ten different uh, levels down here, like attack time, delay, um, sustain time. This is uh, quite tedious and takes a while to do. And I don't like that, because after a while you will knock over your coffee cup and spill everything. So I prefer script-based solutions, so I wrote myself a small helper tool. Um, I'm a terribly bad programmer, and this is now all written in C. I call this drum K V1 Gen. Now that's difficult to pronounce, but it's a generator kind of. Um, it creates a mapping file for drum K V1 for you and has two basic operating modes. One is you give it a folder name and say take all of the wave files from this folder, align them on your keyboard, starting with some lower C, and the next is in C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and so on, and they will all just be aligned and can be played back like this. The second mode is a mapping file mode where you have some more control about, about um, what sample will end up on what key. You might want this for typical um, standard MIDI mappings where you expect the kick drum to be here and the uh, snare to be there, for instance. So, um, quick demo. I say here I have got a folder full of files. Um, I'm not sure about the loudness now. This is, um, let me just check. Um, is audio up? Okay, um, these are just Star Trek sounds, right? Found them somewhere on the web. Okay, so I want to create a mapping for drum kv1 from this list of files. What I do is I start drum kv1 gen. Uh, the usage is like this. I tell it uh, my directory is, um, sorry, that one, and my output file is um, blah. I always call them dot drum kv1. So it creates one mapping file, which has now 22 entries. That output file is some kind of a um, XML-like file. Next thing is to start drum kv1. This is now the um, standalone instance. Oops. With that file. Takes a while. This is a very, this is a 10-year-old Atom-based netbook, which still works, so bear with me if it's a little, little slow sometimes. I would then just connect my um, my keyboard to a drum KV1 and my drum KV1 to a system. So I'm one of the last QTech control users, I guess. I have not installed Patchet or, or Takala on this one yet. So. Okay, that was the first stage. Um, <clears throat> Second stage is now slightly more complex. I'd say, um, let me just think where the data. Uh, I got a, um, <coughs> where am I? Um, sorry, I have to find my files again. I've got a map file for a uh, drum machine. Say we take an old Roland um, TR808. This is my mapping file format. So this is something a human can easily write. First is the number is the MIDI note number. Second is the 
relative path name to that file. Um, I've produced some of these files in advance already, and so this way I can control which sound file goes to what um, node, and put that into drumkv1, same as before. Let me just load that one, uh, or 909 in this case, no big difference. Okay, so that's easy. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> right. Um, so with that in place, you could now say, um, let me just see, uh, prepare some material with that. I was using Sequencer 64, which is the successor to the old SEC24 tool, which is now fortunately in, in um, active maintenance again by, um, by uh, Chris Alstrom. So let me just see that the files are all, in fact, playing back to the right. Uh, no, they are not. Some I didn't remember that the paths are the, the names of my instruments. That's a pity. So I would have to correct some of them. But let's just see on the fly. So we have some pattern playing. As time the second. Loudness. We can loud louder. Sorry, can do that. Uh, I guess I turned down my other mixer before a bit. Ah, come on. Okay, yeah, that explains it. Sorry to the guys on the mixer now. <laughs> uh, uh, come on. Uh, hello? Ah, there's something is blocked now in the UI. One moment. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay, as easy as that. Yep. Okay. Um, that's more or less it. Um, the last thing to say about it, um, the source code, so I'm, I've really now started using GitLab for the very first time. The source code is now up since yesterday <laughs> under my brand new account. And the last thing to play to you is something I was trying a little longer to create some kind of nice little 30 second song with it, so bear with me if this disturbs you, especially the low time. But it was still fun producing this. I found this from some video from Dr. Mix on uh, YouTube, a I think US or UK based um, mixing mastering engineer. He was testing old drum machines and he showed this one, and I like this song, so um, 30 seconds of pain. Sorry for that. That's drum KV1, Jen. Thank you very much.